Leaving Pedro Point Headlands and looking north, you will see the uplifted slopes of Rockaway Headlands, one of our finest examples of native coastal prairie habitat. On the steep slopes, the ground is rocky, and any eroded soil just slides off the slope, so the vegetation growing there is dense, with low-growing coastal prairie grassland and native wildflowers. On the bluff top, there is more soil buildup, and the perennial grasses and wildflowers are more spread out in the grassland prairie. One of the dominant perennial grasses is the blue fescue, although the flowering spikes actually look more reddish. Purple needlegrass is our state grass and occurs throughout the state. The needle-like structures actually help the seeds burrow into the soil, planting new plants. The California oak grass is a low-growing plant that spreads its flowery heads out so that the seeds drop further away from the parent plant, leaving a space between the plants for wildflowers. The wildflowers grow in between and intermingled with native grasses. The dark pink or magenta flowers in this picture are the coast onion, and the light colored ones are the white globe lilies. The coast onion is a beautiful spring wildflower found only in California, usually right along the coast. They really do smell like onions, and Native American use the bulbs for their onion flavor. The white globe lily also can be found only in California. The nodding white flowers are sometimes referred to as fairy lanterns. Many of our perennial grasslands throughout California have been taken over by naturalized European annual grasses, such as quaking grass, also known as rattlesnake grass, because its seed heads resemble the rattle on a rattlesnake. Here are some more examples of the diverse and beautiful wildflowers that bloom here throughout the spring and summer seasons. The coast tarweed blooms in the summer months when it has less competition from other plants for pollinators and water. It gets its name from the sticky resin that covers its leaves and stems and may protect it from animals that wanted to eat it. Ethereal spear is another spring wildflower that can range in color from blue to white. Its name refers to the angel ethereal in Milton's book, Paradise Lost, whose spear was said to uncover any deceit. Native Americans collected the bulbs or corms and ate them like potatoes. Blooming in late spring and summer, this lovely pink flower has the descriptive name Farewell to Spring. It can be seen many spots along the coast, including a large patch on the hillside on Devil Slide. The checkered mallow, or checkered bloom, blooms in the spring and disappears in the dry months of summer. It is usually very low growing along the windy coast. The plant with these large sunflower-like flowers is known as the narrow leaf mule ears, a name that describes its long leaves. Large patches can be found among the grasses on Rockaway Headlands, where its yellow flowers put on a spectacular display in the early spring. This prickly plant, the brownie thistle, is one of our native thistles that grows low to the ground, never more than a few inches high. It blooms in early spring, attracting many insects. The soap plant grows in both coastal prairie and in the coastal scrub. It was much prized by Native Americans who crushed its bulb and mixed it with water to use as soap, thus giving its name. The tiny white flowers are often overlooked since they don't open until late afternoon. They stay open until morning and are pollinated by evening or night flying insects. Varied lupin is one of the prettiest of our spring wildflowers. Its name refers to the varied appearance of its flowers, which can range in color from white or yellow to blue or violet. Booker's evening primrose can be found in almost every plant community along the coast blooms profusely from spring to fall. In the fall, its seed pods open and provide a feast for many birds, particularly finches, that can be seen clinging to the tall flower. To sum up our trip, here are some aerial photographs. This one of Pacifica State Beach showing the beaches and dunes. The wetland marsh in San Pedro Creek at Pacifica State Beach. 
the Willow Freshwater Wetlands and the Cattail Freshwater Wetlands at Pacifica State Beach. Moving to Pedro Point headlands showing the coastal bluff scrub on the steep slopes. And then finally to uh, Rockaway headlands showing the coastal prairie grasslands. We hope this has given you an overview of the diversity of plants and plant communities on and near Pacifica Beach. Great. Thank you so much for coming. That was a really informative uh, slideshow. I really appreciate you sharing that with us. I was wondering, um, well, I did see the, we talked a little bit about the ice plant before and how there's, um, we're trying to eradicate some of that to let some of the native plants come in. Um, also, I was wondering about the wild oat grass. Is that what it's called, wild oat grass? The, uh, the native one or the rattlesnake grass? The rattlesnake. Is rattlesnake that, grass. Are we, is there anything going on for that one? No, not yet. Not um, yet. And uh, I, I know that actually state parks on some of the uh, state park land, they are doing uh, some management of the rattlesnake grass but uh, not at Rock Rockaway Headlands yet. Not at the Headlands yeah. yet. Yeah. Um, so for the eradication of the, the ice plant, um, is there any information or do you have information on other, you know, tours or, you know, hikes, uh, that kind of stuff for, for us? Um, well, I know that the uh, Pacifica environmental family here, right here in Pacifica has uh, uh, certain days set aside for beach cleanups and also restoration of the Pacifica dunes and I think Pigeon Point Lighthouse. State Parks has a couple areas where they're working on some restoration area. There's a large area associated with the Half Moon Bay. Uh, state beaches where there's removal of a number of different non-native plants and there's a project also down at Pigeon Point Lighthouse where we we've been removing the ice plant letting the native plants come back up and planting them with native plants as well. And also there's uh, places where people can go to buy native plants to plant in their own garden to attract insects yes. and, and birds and just you know also have the native plants enjoy them as well. And I know some of the uh, local uh, California Native Plant Society chapters have um, uh, sales, native plant sales. The Yerba Buena chapter and the Santa Clara Valley chapter have sales. And also um, Yerba Buena Nursery uh, has uh, native plants for sale. And I, I know some of our local um, nurseries have uh, native plants. and what they call drought tolerant plants for sale as well. Right, okay, great. And, and most of the native plants are dry, they must be drought tolerant. <laughs> well, <laughs> they do well here, yes. <laughs> they do well here, they must have drought tolerant. Yeah, the wetland ones are not, but those are not the kind of plants you usually plant in your garden unless you have a little stream or something. Right, right going on there, <laughs> that's true. Okay, um, you brought a flower in. I wanted to, to have us look at that. And uh, it's, it's the evening they, primrose, the we had a picture of it. And um, it starts blooming down here and blooms up all the way to the end. And each of these are little seed pods. And in fact, I'm shedding seeds here. And this is what the uh, birds will cling to and they'll open up the pods and eat the seeds. So if you like to oh. attract finches to your garden, this is a really nice plant to have. Fantastic. So the finches are the main bird that, that does that. They perch right on and just get right And in there. poke and them open and eat them. Oh. Yeah. Wow, that's a great one. Uh, is that one available? Do you know if it's available? Yes, it is. That's one yes, of the ones yes, that you can buy at the it, local. It grows anywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> really? It's, it's right. one of the most I'm common there. ones that you see growing along the roadsides. Right now. Um, oh, it's oh, just okay. about through blooming now, but for the last couple of months, it's been extremely showy. So and that's a fall bloomer then? Or uh, summer, summer, fall. Summer and fall, both. Maybe one in winter and maybe one in spring. <laughs> it's a very hardy plant. Oh. Great. And the flowers are much prettier. I mean, they're larger they're, and yeah, not right, quite so yeah. wilted. Okay great. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thanks again for coming in. I really appreciate you. And I'd like to uh, remind you that you can see us on YouTube. <laughs>